Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know, I'm Angie, this is 4F Beauty. Hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. You will have seen from the title of the thumbnail, and if you've read any of it, don't worry, I don't read them until after I've watched either of the description. I'm playing with the palette that my lovely wee Scottish faking friend Will sent me in friend mail. The Sigma Ivy. So, if you want to find out exactly how well this little palette behaved, or otherwise, darling, you have the best seed in the house. Sammy concurs. It's time to grab a drink, grab a snack. Put your feet up, get comfy, because here it comes. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Hey, my lovelies, I am back from the intro. It is quarter past nine at night. I wanted to film during the day, but let's just say there was noise from one side. But Hubby's gone out with the boys tonight, so I thought, ooh, I've got a quiet house, I can get some filming done. And I have been dying to get into this. This is the palette that my lovely friend Will sent me, the Sigma Ivy palette. She is beautiful. I'm really hoping that this combined with this that I treated myself to the Natasha Mini Gold and the Boudoir Noir from Colourpop I'm hoping these four together will stop me craving the Natasha Gold palette because obviously you can't get that now and everyone's selling it for stupid prices so I want to start putting this on my face right, usual preamble uh, this is still a teaching channel, so I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. If you're more advanced, there's a speed widget, feel free to speed me up. I don't have any problem with that at all. But I go at a speed that the slowest person can keep up with. It also means that I don't exacerbate my pain levels too much. When I'm filming the eye portion. I zoom right in so just my eyes are on screen. number of reasons for this. One, if you watch me on a phone and your eyesight's not what it could be, you can still see what's happening. And two, it makes it easier for me when I have to cut segments out when I have to stop and pause because of pain. Um, I don't cut any of the eye makeup out. You see the whole thing from start to finish. So you can easily follow along and recreate the look yourself. Um, because it's so up close and personal with just my eyes, when I'm looking down to add more pigment or clean a brush, you do get a lovely shot of my widow's peak. You're welcome. Uh, but uh, it's a small price to pay for actually being able to see what's going on. I'm going to insert a clip just now talking you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids because although makeup wears very similarly on them throughout the day the actual application process is slightly different in order to get the most longevity and the best initial impact from your shadows and I see so many people with deep set eyes like myself that mistakenly believe or are mistakenly told that they have hooded lids. They follow a hooded lid tutorial and wonder why it doesn't work. So, the clip I'm going to insert is just my eyes on screen. I talk you through very clearly the difference between the two eye types 
and explain how best to apply makeup depending on deep set or hooded lids. Once that's done, I'll be back to apply some of these beautiful pigments to my eyelids. So I'll see you right after this bubbly, wibbly, clippy bit. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies and I am back. Right, 
I'm going in with one of my Cosmic Brushes brushes that's got the glitter in the handles, which I could sit and watch those all night, I really could. Okay, I'm going to start off by going into Mead, which is the lightest of the brown mats. Not a huge amount of kick up at all in the pan as you can see. Kick up doesn't worry me because you can just pick it up next time round if you're building colour up or if you're doing the other eye. Now I always use the Viennese Waltz method of blending which is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when you get there and reverse turns to come back again. If you rely on the windscreen wiper or windshield wiper, I'm 47, I've lost over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know slim teenagers with the same issue. If you use the windshield wiper, that's when you get your eyelid folding over and you get those telltale white stripes. Viennese Waltz gently manipulates the eye first in one direction and then in the other, or the eyelid in one direction then the other, and will hopefully eliminate any striping. I always hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on this end as possible and if the handle is long enough brace it against the palm of your hand to stabilise that end if you're not too sure of your abilities yet. Right so I'm going to start halfway between my natural crease and my brow and I'm just going to apply some of this all the way across. How's your day been? I apologise if I yawn a fair amount, but I have been up since half past four this morning. That's when, actually I've been up since half past three, because I got woken by pain, so I came down and had a cup of coffee, rather than lay there and was disturbing Chris. That's gone on really nicely, really smoothly. And then it should do. It's a brown. It's one of the easiest colours to do. It's my first time using Sigma, so very interested to see the formulas. What time did you get up today? Did you have an as early a start as me, or? Do you have a nice genteel start later on, more civilised time? I like Chris being on the early because it means we get more of the evening together. And obviously in the summer it means that, you know, he can get gardening done during the week which leaves the weekend free for us. Well, his weekend, Sunday, Monday. Because of course all of my medical appointments have to be arranged for a Monday, so I really only have Sundays together and well, it's Saturday night, he's out of the town. I doubt he'll be home much before half two, three in the morning. At which point, yes, I will have been up for 24 hours. Um, and he'll probably be in bed until about 10. Uh -huh. He works hard during the week though, so he deserves his laying on Sunday. Just cleaning this brush off. On a clean microfibre cloth.
and now I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush. This is the brush I've just used. This is the brush I'm about to use. Now whatever the width of the head of the brush, that's how far it will blend the shadow out. Okay? And I'm going to dip into... Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to dip into Thistle, which is a deep green. Now, greens are notoriously difficult to create anyway. Deep greens are very much so. So let's see how this behaves, shall we? I'm going to start a little bit lower down. And just... Take this across in exactly the same way that I did with the brown. That's gone on really nicely. I'm not worried about it hitting the lid because I'm going to be putting shimmer on. Got a bit of fallout there, but again, I do my foundation afterwards. So. For a first pass with a smaller brush, that's not bad. Let's see how you blend, shall we? So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, then I sincerely hope that tomorrow will be a better one. If you're at the start of your day, and I hope it's as fabulous as you are, darling. Okay, that blended really nicely, and that was just one dip in the palette. There's a heck of a lot of fallout there, though. a lot of fallout. And there is more kick up in the pan with this one, whether that's because I'm using a more dense brush, because it's more tapered, I'm not sure. But as you can see, there's a lot more kick up in the green pan than there was in this one. Has anybody else noticed recently with YouTube that all of a sudden on your newsfeed, if you don't go to the subscriptions option, they're starting to suggest some seriously random channels to me. I mean, I've got quite an eclectic mix of stuff I watch. Um, obviously I've got makeup channels that I follow, but I've also got true crime, documentaries, um, body language, psychoanalysis type channels. I occasionally watch some of the um, commentary channels commenting on things like Anne Boleyn and Chantal and you know the car crash YouTube as it's referred to I've been getting some really weird stuff in my suggested feed. That's nice. I always sit back and drop my brows and check that the shapes match because sometimes you have to do a different shape each side just to get them to look the same. Now I'm going to go down to an even smaller blending brush next and if you have moved 
who are creating a new crease line this is the point that you create that new crease this is the one I've just used this is what I'm about to use and I'm going to go into clove which is this dark brown again a fair amount of kick up with that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off just here just at the corner of my natural crease and initially just do a circle just blending that circle to really deepen that outer corner there bring it down onto the outer third of the mobile lid can't see a damn thing because this is the eye I'm blinding so I have no idea whether I'm on camera, in focus and I'm relying on muscle memory and I'm actually applying this in the right place Yay! You can see that just gives a bit of extra depth on that outer corner there. I'm just going to bring that out halfway along. I don't want to bring it right the way through because I want to keep that green showing. And just flick the edge up a little bit. I'm going to tidy this up with my cellar water in a minute anyway. I like that. And then same thing this side. Start with a circle on the outside corner. Bring it down onto the outer third of the lid, mobile lid. Give it a flick. Just bring that about halfway along the eye. So we'll leave this green here. Now with this eye, I do have to break my own rule about not stretching the lid out. Because um, I have super deep creasing just here. You can see I've still got the tiger striping in the corner there. It's because my eye was pulled about when I was four and five years old by the ophthalmic hospital when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly with it. So that shows you 40 years ago, 42 years ago, 43 years ago, however many years ago it was now, that damage was caused and I'm paying for it now. So don't pull your eye about unless you already have the same problem as me. Right, this is a pad with my cellar water on. I'm just going to tidy up that outer edge like so. Now I've had a lot of people say to me, why don't you just use tape? Well, because in my view, if the tape is sticky enough to stop the powder from going underneath it, and it's sticky enough that it'll pull on your eye as you remove it, which is what we don't want. Okay. Got a flattish brush. I'll get a slightly more tapered one than that actually. Mm, let's use this one. It goes a bit flatter and it's got a bit more of a point at this end for getting in there. Now, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. However, 
if you don't want to apply the pigment with your finger you want to use a brush nine times out of ten if you wet the pigment you will get the similar effect as if you have just used your finger and got the best payoff you can use any liquid you can use um, priming spray moisturizing spray like MAC or Marie Badescu um, setting spray finishing spray you can even just save an empty spray bottle wash it out each time and put fresh water in it um, whatever you do just don't wet put a wet brush into a dry into a pressed pigment I'm going to be finishing up this old makeup obsession because we all know my favourite face setting spray is my Gerard Cosmetics a slay all day I have got a coupon code I do earn from it feel free to use it if you want if you don't want to well that's fine too right I'm going to start off by going into Envy which is a sort of Dirty gold, would you say? Khaki gold, maybe? I'm just going to wet the pigment both sides. Now, this ferrule is now wet, so tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in place. Otherwise, they'll fall out and you'll have a very expensive stick. I'm just going to pop this onto the first part of the mobile lid. And that's possible, I may have enough on the other side to do the other one. Right, I'll show you what I do so that I cause as little damage as possible to the lid. I only pull the lid out far enough to straighten the creases. I don't pull it out and tuck it up round behind my ear roll. And then apply the pigment as quickly and efficiently as I can, making sure it's properly adhered to the lid and then gently putting it back down again and then just finishing off the edges. Because if I don't do this what happens is the pigment settles in those creases. And then as the pigment dries through the day and I'm moving my eyes, it cascades down into my eyes, causes a lot of pain, goes on my face, ruins my makeup, looks awful. Right, I've now dried the brush off and cleaned it off. And I'm going to go into Elixir. Do you know I didn't even swatch this? It was just too perfect. I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> I know. Dry the ferrule. Grab my mirror so I can see what I'm doing. And then and apply this to the middle third of my lid, bringing it out and then using the tip of the bristles to blend it in with the brown at the edge there and then just drag that first pigment across so we get a nice blend of the two colours meet. That is so pretty. Dry the brush off. I don't need to clean it, just dry it. I'm going back into the same pigment, obviously. You'll see when I do this side how much more this lid moves in comparison to this lid. See how much more movement there is, and I'm not pressing any harder on the brush than I was before. That shows you how much elasticity has been lost in 
that particular part of my eyelid. But I repeat exactly the same process. Okay, I'm happy with that. I am going to pause you while I pop some foundation and base products etc on and then I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I'm going to have a little bit of time before I can chat to you again but for you my darlings it's going to be absolutely instant so I'll see you other side of this dissolvey bit I guess. I may have brought you in a little bit close but I did a wing today. Of course my eyes instantly started watering as soon as I did them. Isn't that just typical darlings? Typical darlings. Um, I used the collection Galactica uh, solar ray which is this sort of burnished gold which I thought would go quite nicely. I was torn between doing that and doing a brown chocolate brown one but I just thought that gold would play nicely against what else? Right, I have soaped my brows as per usual and I'm going to dip into a bourbon, the colour, not the drink, although that does sound very good right now. And just going to just shade in my brows. I do soap brows using the pink honey soap. which is slightly sticky so then when you go over it with powder which is great because then you can tie it to whatever look you're doing on the day because you can use the eyeshadow that you've used on your eyes Do not start running before I have taken the photos, please. And then when you go over it with the powder, it sort of sets the stickiness in place and it grabs the powder. So it does twofold. It sort of stops the powder from dispersing but also sets the actual brow itself You've got normal coloured brows for once, folks. Doesn't that very often, does it? Oh, this eye is really going to bug me. Right, let's see if we can... Um, get this bottom lid done. I'm using a chubby stubby little brush, again one of the cosmic brushes and I'm going to go into clove which is that deep brown that we used. I'm just going to run that all the way along.
and clean the brush. And pick up a little bit of mead, which is the nice neutral brown up there that we used. And just use that just to just slightly soften underneath the eye. But still keeping that nice depth of colour. And now a little bit lush. In it though, in it. Uh, now, highlighter. Very good question. Um, where is my green highlighter? There it is. This is my Ofra Mother Earth highlighter. Blasted eye. I need to film more films after this. It needs to stop doing this. And it needs to stop right now. Immediately, if not sooner. Might have to do some make do and mend on that in a minute. As in, once it finishes weeping, top up the concealer and powder. Right, this is a cheap lip brush that I've had well over a decade. I'm just going to pop some of this just up under the tail of my brows. And then in a corner and just bring it along underneath to meet the brown. Okay my darlings, I'm gonna pause you, I'm gonna go off screen, try and wait for my blooming eye to finish watering, and then I'll do uh Mascara, lippy, I'll put highlight on my face, finish my face off, and I'll be back. So I'll see you instantly. Wish me luck on this eye stopping itself from uh, misbehaving, huh? Okay. I think... I think it's behaving. But this is my finished look with my first use of the Sigma Ivy palette. Uh, just to give you a rundown of what else I have on my face, the primer I used today was the Bobbi Brown um, Vitamin Enriched Face Base, which to be honest is more like just a moisturiser than a primer. Um, but I knew I wasn't going anywhere tonight, so I just I thought I'd stick a moisturiser and primer on instead. Foundation is Mac Studio Fix in NW13. And it would appear that my knobs just come off. Oh, I misses. That was a rare oop out. There we go. Do you know what? I'll worry about that another day. I'm going to get covered in it otherwise. But yeah, uh, NW13 in that. It's only a cheap pump. I've got, I think I've got about four of them for a uh, fiver, so I'll just find another one, change it. Um, eyeshadows, obviously, Sigma. Mascara is Catrice Glam and Dull Waterproof Mascara. I showed you the eyeliner earlier, that was the collection. Galactica, 
uh, powder. I've got the NYX lavender powder under my eyes and the Too Faced Peach Perfect everywhere else. I stopped making that which is annoying but I did buy a new backup so I have got a backup of it which is good. I'm trying to only get backups when I know something's being discontinued. The highlight is Ofra Mother Earth. I put it on with the Fenty brush by mistake, which uh, <laughs> is not going anywhere. I'm glad I could just go ball. Lipstick is one of my Hourglass Confessions. It's at night. I just thought this sort of this berry red would really go nicely with the. It's actually quite a Christmassy look, to be honest, with the greens and the reds. And my setting spray of choice today was Gerard Rose Slay All Day. I really like this. Um, the green did have a fair amount of fallout, but it does. It, it you know, I do my my foundation and everything after my eyes anyway, so that really isn't an issue for myself. It blended really nicely. It is a little bit patchy where my eyes been running, but we all saw the application. We saw it went on absolutely fine. I can't wait to continue playing with this, basically. Thank you once again, my lovely Will, for sending that down for me. I shall have a lot of fun playing with that. That might even be my Christmas Day palette. Right, my lovely ones, let me know in the comments below, have you tried any of the Sigma 9 pans? Which one have you tried? Which ones have you tried? Which ones are you tempted by? Um, oh, blush, I forgot to do the blush. It was... and the bronzer. Bronzer is Butter Bronzer by Physician's Formula because I'm determined I am going to finish this. Look how close I am to finishing. It's taken me all year to get that far lined. Um, the NYX is the the NYX, the blush is the NYX Sweet Cheeks in a Silence is Golden. I'm getting down with the youth and trying a yellow blush at my advanced age. Do you know what? When you get to your 40s, you can do whatever the hell you like and nobody tells you any different because. Uh, they either think you've gone nuts or they're scared of you. Either way, I don't care. Um, <laughs> let me know what you think of this look. The ghost in the corner who has just thrown something across the room. Goodness only knows what. I should go and investigate when I turn the camera off. Because there's only me in the house and we have no pets. was I saying? Yes, let me know what you think of the eyeshadow palette. What other Sigma ones have you got? I've got Sigma Untamed to play with as well, which I'm really excited about having tried this and seen how good the formula is. I'm really excited to try Untamed. I got lipstick on my teeth and you didn't tell me. Could have told me. I thought we were friends. Come on. Right. Um... Sorry, my brain appears to have walked away with itself, but it is half past ten at night, so I have been up for oh, way too many hours. Nineteen? Is it nineteen hours? Yes, I believe it is. Nineteen hours I went up. Ugh. Right. If you're one of my 4F babies, Please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people, uh, but they are leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious that you've been unsubscribed. 
it's also worth while you're there double checking your notification status because mine keeps getting knocked back to um, personalised which means I don't get any at all uh, so yeah just, just double check that while you're there leave me a like, leave me a comment maybe a cheeky little share of the video would be quite nice if you're new here hi, hello, welcome this, to be fair, it's probably a good indication of what most of my films are like. I witter on about all kinds of everything in what I'm told is a very soothing voice. Uh, and for some reason people keep coming back and listening for more. So if you are one of those people who would like to come back and listen to some more, it's super easy to do. All you do is you hit that red subscribe button down there. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that someone at YouTube pulls their finger out and actually sends you some. In the meantime, as well as this rather ample backside upon which I am perched, I have an ample back catalogue of films that you could be watching. Um, I've got all kinds. I've got other product reviews and tutorials. I've got tag films, challenge films collaborations, uh, I even read my favourite poem in one of them so hopefully there should be a playlist somewhere that will interest you and you know I've, I've said it since time immemorial grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist get comfy with your coffee and your croissant or your, your, your Vimto and your Viscount biscuit you wonder where I was going there, didn't you? I know, I know. Dirty. Um, put your feet up and just enjoy chilling out for a bit while I blether on at you, usually applying coloured pigments to various parts of my face. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I, well, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.